Welcome to the Idaho Food Bank. I'm Whitney. And I'm Blake. And this is a refresher video of 13 important food safety programs that make up our food safety management system. A commitment to food safety requires training and an understanding that everyone plays a significant part in the prevention of foodborne illness when they work at the Idaho Food Bank. These 13 programs that we will discuss today work together to ensure safe food for those we serve. By adhering to these best practices, we are being proactive in feeding the community safely. So grab your gloves, park your forklift, and get ready for the Idaho Food Bank Food Safety Refresher video. Gee willikers, that's a mouthful. Food safety is paramount at the Idaho Food Bank. Providing nutritious meals and safe food products to those we serve goes hand in hand with solving hunger. We believe everyone should have access to safe, wholesome food through our commitment to high food safety standards and a strong food safety culture, we can achieve this together. Everyone who works or volunteers at the Idaho Food Bank is responsible for food safety, whether it is receiving a donation, during transport, or through our community distributions. Preventing foodborne infections is up to all of us. The Idaho Food Bank's employee illness policy states that any individual exhibiting symptoms of fever, chills, sore throat, vomiting, diarrhea, jaundice, or anyone with exposed or open wounds will not be permitted to work or volunteer. If you have any of these symptoms, you could contaminate food products. If you're sick with these or any other related symptoms, contact your manager and please stay home. You can return to work after you are symptom-free for 24 hours without using any fever-reducing medications. Are you prepared for work? Are you wearing the right kind of clothing? And does your hygiene support you being in an Idaho Food Bank facility? Your habits and routines matter. Everyone must wear clean and appropriate clothing when on premises. Make sure that clothing items do not present a hazard to you or the food products you handle. Loose jewelry presents a hazard to the food in you. Please remove it before handling food. Wash your hands before working with any packaging or food products. Wear enclosed shoes with proper traction to avoid slips, trips, and falls. Open-toed shoes are not permitted in any Idaho Food Bank facility. Store personal belongings, including phones, wallets, keys, purses, outerwear, and personal items in a locker or office prior to starting work. Report any illness to management as soon as possible. Cover band-aids or bandages completely with personal protective equipment while handling food. Wear personal protective equipment such as hair nets, beard nets, gloves, and aprons while in food handling areas. Please don't bring any food, tobacco products, chewing gum, or drinks into the warehouse or repack room. If you are unsure of where spill-proof water bottles are permitted in the warehouse, speak to your supervisor. Wash your hands after eating or using tobacco products. Wash your hands after handling chemicals. Wash your hands after emptying the garbage. Wash your hands after using the restroom. And wash your hands before handling any food. And if we haven't said it enough, wash your hands routinely. Everyone that the Idaho Food Bank serves expects clean and safe food products. Wear your identification badge at all times when you're on premises. If you encounter someone not wearing an ID badge, politely ask them for identification. If they don't have a badge or refuse to show it to you, alert a manager as soon as possible. If any food products appear to have been tampered with, isolate the food product and inform a manager as soon as possible. Check to ensure that exit doors remain closed at all times. As regulated by the FDA, we are required to provide safe and sanitary transport of food products and ensure that transport practices do not generate food safety risks. 
Check to make sure that refrigerated trucks are at the right temperature. Keep vehicles clean, secure, and free of pests. All drivers must complete the necessary food safety for carriers training, and it must be documented. Maintain records for all activities required for compliance. It is also important for drivers to document the temperature of perishable items before and after transportation. Everyone who inspects food containers must complete the necessary training requirements on sanitary transportation. The big eight. They are milk, eggs, wheat, soy, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, and crustacean shellfish. The FDA recognizes sesame as an allergen after January 1st, 2023. So how do you prevent these common allergens from contaminating other food products? You ensure allergenic products are identified and stored properly to prevent leakage and cross contact. You store allergenic products below non-allergenic products. You wash your hands after handling foods containing any allergens. You ensure ingredient labels of all food products contain the necessary allergen statement that identifies the specific allergen in the food. In the event of a spill of allergenic products, use proper cleaning and sanitizing procedures. Pests. They're called pests for a reason. We've designed our pest control program to minimize pest activity in food storage and handling areas. Observe proper housekeeping guidelines such as cleaning up after yourself and cleaning spills promptly. This will prevent us from attracting pests. Keep personal belongings out of the warehouse to reduce the risk of pest infestation. Monitor all signs of pest activity, such as rodents, birds, and insects in stored products. Ensure bait stations are in their correct location and close all warehouse doors. Ensure there is no evidence of pests in trucks when the product arrives in the warehouse. Don't use any outside pest control products. The Idaho Food Bank will call our pest control service with all our pest problems. Notify your food safety and compliance manager if you observe any pests or pest activity. By taking proactive measures, we can prevent contamination from glass, brittle plastics, and ceramics. If something breaks, clean it up as soon as possible and determine if any food products are damaged and should be appropriately disposed of. If you notice that plastic scoops are showing signs of cracking and chipping, dispose of them and notify the manager so they can be replaced. When carrying out cleaning and sanitizing practices, always ensure you use the right chemicals for the task. Don't use chemicals around exposed food products and always wash your hands after using any chemical to prevent food contamination and for your own safety. If you aren't certain, make sure you confirm with a manager before using a chemical for a task. You may need to refer to the Safety Data Sheet or SDS reference book on how to use a chemical correctly. Always take care when handling chemicals and follow proper cleanup procedures to ensure you don't leave any chemical spills in the facility. We maintain a safety data sheet on site for each chemical in the facility so you can refer to it in the event of a spill or accidental misuse. If food products, packaging materials, or product surfaces come in contact with blood or other bodily fluids, dispose of the food products and notify a manager immediately. Clean and sanitize any areas and product surfaces that come in contact with vomit, diarrhea, blood, or bodily fluids using the two-step cleaning and sanitizing method. Notify a management team member immediately. Use a spill kit to prevent the spread of norovirus, a foodborne illness, and any other bloodborne pathogens. 
housekeeping practices form the foundation of integrity and safety of the food products we store and distribute. Good housekeeping prevents accidents, including slips, trips, and falls by our employees and volunteers, and helps keep pests in check. Everyone is responsible for maintaining a clean work area. Please make sure that you continuously clean up after yourself. Clean up wet and dry spills using appropriate chemicals as soon as they occur. Remove trash, dirt, and debris as necessary. Clear the area of obstacles such as broken pallets or extension cords. Regularly empty trash receptacles to prevent overflow and unsanitary conditions. Routinely wipe down work areas using appropriate chemical cleaners. Sweep and mop work areas using appropriate chemicals and supplies to reduce tracking dirt into other parts of the warehouse. If you have any questions about what should be cleaned daily, review the checklist for maintaining the repack room and the warehouse. Warehouses are magnets for dirt and debris, so it's necessary to clean often used work areas routinely. Use the daily cleaning checklist to maintain work areas in the warehouse and in the repack room. Check the master cleaning schedule weekly for the periodic cleaning of overheads, racking, and equipment. Thank you so much for all that you do for the Idaho Food Bank. And on behalf of the Idahoans we serve, thank you for taking food safety seriously, because it really does matter. Now, go wash your hands. Just kidding. Uh. Let's go wash our hands.